welcome we will start the discussion on statistical inference so in statistical inference basically we are going to perform either of the two tasks that is uh, given here that is we will estimate the unknown parameter or we will test whether a statement about a population is acceptable or not so by accepting or not means what like we have taken a sample and we have performed the calculations or analysis for that sample only and we are going to tell that that is true for the entire population okay it means even if it, it is for an infinite population we have taken a, pop, a sample of some fixed size and from that fixed size we are going to talk for the entire thing is it acceptable or not that is the question right so these are the two things that we <coughs> will de deal in the uh, statistical inference okay <coughs> suppose we uh, here we have some definitions let us go one by one uh, first of all let me present a definition that uh, we have a random sample so when we say say a random sample it is of course x1 through xn on a variable uh, x with some density or mass function that is given in terms of either x and theta some parameter okay or <coughs> p of x comma theta this is going to be the case and this theta can be taken from some specified set okay so in this situation we can consider statistics t which is an estimator of theta so basically what is t this t statistics t is a function of all this uh, random samples now that all of all of these random variables in a sample as a density or a mass function okay which has an unknown parameter theta that is what we need to find it out right so uh, in this case our t is called as called the point estimator of theta okay so basically when we are interested in finding the theta so now what are we going to find out we are going to find out the value of theta through the statistics that statistic is called as a point estimator and this process is called as point estimation okay and when we find out this one when we call this t as a point estimator of theta we call its realization t okay that means uh, this is going to have some value t at n that is going to be the uh, of something it's this form okay and uh, <coughs> these values are the realization of sample <coughs> what i mean by realization is that uh, these are some random variables of course they are going to have some value right so that value we are calling it as realization okay and the value of t evaluated at these values is called as the realization of the uh, estimator okay and this is the <coughs> and this value is the estimate of theta okay and now uh, let me give the next definition we again have a random sample with the usual stuff with pdf and uh, all this thing and we define the statistics in the usual sense okay now when we say t as an unbiased estimator unbiased estimator of theta if expected value of this t is theta 
if this is happening then we can say t is an unbiased estimator of theta okay for example uh, <coughs> we have found uh, the uh, expected value of the sample mean x bar isn't it it was mu okay so this x bar is an unbiased estimator of mu okay because our population were also having the same mu value isn't it that is why we are now we are coming to a conclusion that this is an unbiased estimator okay now this e of s square what is this s square it is the sample variance isn't it so the sample variance is an unbiased estimator okay so sam this is an unbiased estimator how do we prove it just give a try okay moving further <coughs> we have the next definition that is efficient estimator so what do we call it as an efficient estimator suppose we have two unbiased estimators for a particular uh, parameter theta and if we wish to say t1 is more efficient than t2 in this case the variance should be the minimum okay so unbiased estimator with minimum variance is known as the efficient estimator okay and uh, we have an example for this suppose we have three random sample okay so that is a sample of size 3 taken from an infinite population with mean mu and variance sigma square now we have t1 to be equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 upon 3 and the other estimator is x1 plus 3 x2 plus x3 upon 5 okay we are able to calculate the t of t1 and d of t2 both are mu that is what is your uh, e of t1 it is 1 upon 3 times of expectation of x1 plus expectation of x2 plus expectation of x3 isn't it so it is going to be 3 mu upon 3 which is mu okay in a similar way expectation of t2 is 1 upon 5 times of expectation of x1 plus 3 times of expectation of x2 plus expectation of x3 so it is going to be mu plus 3 mu plus mu upon 5 which is 5 mu upon 5 which is mu itself so we just verified expectation of t1 and t2 are mu okay which proves both of them are unbiased estimators of mu now let us calculate the variance of these things so when we calculate variance what is going to happen uh, the constant will come out as a square so it is 1 upon 9 times of since all these are uh, independent sample it gets this form and uh, we get sigma square upon 3 whereas in this case so 1 upon 5 comes as 1 upon 25 outside this is variance of x squared plus 9 times of variance of x2 plus variance of x3. When we sum them up, we get 11 upon 25 times of sigma squared. When we compare these two things, anyway, sigma squared is some fixed quantity. Okay. So now that you need to compare the values of 1 upon 3 and 11 upon 25, you get that v of t1 is smaller than v of t2. In this case, we come to a conclusion that t1 is more efficient than t2 when estimation of theta is concerned okay remember here both t1 and t2 are estimators of theta okay next we are going to discuss about the uh, maximum likelihood estimation that will be done in the next video thank you